Hello and welcome to another TLDR Global video. When I draw maps for our videos, there's one thing that makes me nervous. Dotted lines. These dotted lines represent a contentious or controversial border. And if you're looking for a good example, let's zoom in on East Africa, and more specifically the autonomous region of Somaliland. In this video, we're going to be discussing this controversial border and the state that encloses it, before debating whether it should be recognised as a state by the international community. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more updates like this one. It not only helps us out, but hitting the bell means that you'll never miss another video from TLDR Global. We're going to split this video into three parts. First, the history of Somaliland, secondly, Somaliland today, and thirdly, whether Somaliland should be recognised as a state. Let's start with the history. Pre-1960, Somaliland was a British protectorate called British Somaliland, while the rest of modern Somalia was an Italian territory called Italian Somaliland. On the 26th of June 1960, Britain gave up control of British Somaliland, which then became the sovereign country of Somaliland. So Somaliland was a proper sovereign state, recognised by 35 others. At this point, you might be wondering why you've never heard of Somaliland, but that would be fair enough, because Somaliland only officially lasted five days. On July 1st, Italy gave up Italian Somaliland, and the two immediately united to become the Somali Republic, which is what we now call Somalia. Unfortunately for the North, this was probably a bit of a mistake. The North had a far smaller population than the South. To give you a sense of the difference, in the 1960 British Somaliland elections, there were only 80,000 voters, compared to 600,000 in the 1956 Italian Somaliland elections. This meant that despite opposition to the 1961 constitution, it still passed with 90% support, mainly from the south, a trend which we'll see continue. The Somali Republic only actually lasted until 1969 anyway, when the president at the time was shot dead by one of his own bodyguards. This was quickly followed by a military coup, where Syed Barre, the then commander of the army, took power, and renamed the country the Somali Democratic Republic. Barre's reign was, it's fair to say, disastrous. He started and lost a war with Ethiopia, which ended in the death of a third of the invading Somali army, he fell out with the Soviets, who were basically his only allies, and he triggered the disastrous and still ongoing Somali civil war. Eventually, in 1991, Barre was overthrown by anti-government rebels, including the Somali National Movement. The Somali National Movement were a northern paramilitary group, and after ousting Barre, they decided to declare Somaliland's independence, basically where the British protectorate of Somaliland used to be. In 2001, they held a referendum on said independence, which was supported by 97% of Somaliland citizens. So where is Somaliland today? Well, Somaliland isn't recognised as a sovereign state by, well, basically anyone else, which is probably why you've never heard of it. But since 2001, they've been a functioning democracy. They've held five peaceful elections, with three separate presidents, and in 2017, Freedom House ranked Somaliland as the only free country in East Africa. More on that in our recent video on the most democratic countries in the world. Somaliland also has relatively low levels of violence, especially when compared to South Somalia, with their capital being one of the safest large cities in Africa. That's not to say that everything's going great though. Their main industry is livestock, which accounts for 70% of all jobs, and even then, only 25% of the population is employed. Its GDP per capita is just $566, which according to the World Bank would make it the 11th poorest country in the world. But to be fair to Somaliland, part of this is because they're not recognised as a sovereign state by the UN, which means that they can't make their own trade deals or apply for World Bank development loans. Nonetheless, things are looking up for Somaliland. In 2018, a Dubai-based company invested $442 million in the Babera port, the largest investment in Somaliland's history. And the UAE became the first Arab country to send a permanent diplomat to their capital. 
Port fees and customs taxes already account for 70 to 80 percent of government revenues, and there's also plans for a free trade zone, airport, hotels, an oil terminal, and a park for 100,000 lorries, which meant that land values have increased tenfold. Which brings us to the last part of this video. Why isn't Somaliland recognised as a sovereign state? They've got their own government, currency, police force, visas, license plates, and even a consulate in Washington DC. Well, it's mainly because the first step for any African country on the path to sovereignty is recognition by the African Union. And the African Union says that they'll only do this with consent from Somalia proper. This is difficult because Somalia barely has a functioning government and they're generally not keen on secession. But there's also another reason, and that's that, in the international community, there's an unspoken don't-touch policy when it comes to Africa's post-colonial borders, because once you change one of them, you're on a slippery slope to changing the whole lot, so many countries just aren't keen to pull that first block. When the colonial powers divided Africa up, they weren't really thinking about Africa's ethnic demography, which means that most African countries include multiple ethnic groups who often don't get along and who would probably prefer to be independent. Take Ethiopia for example. Ethiopia has 10 ethnically based regional states, at least some of whom would, if the current civil war is anything to go by, prefer to be independent. The international community worries that, if they start granting sovereignty to little ethnically centred states like Somaliland, then other African ethnic groups like the Ethiopians will demand the same treatment. And as a general rule, secession movements involve fighting, which the African Union is keen to avoid. The most recent examples of African independence, Eritrea and South Sudan, a gulag state and a war zone respectively, haven't helped Somaliland's case either. Somaliland will argue that they're not like Eritrea or Sudan, because it's not like they're becoming a country. They're just returning things to the way they were when Somaliland was a sovereign state recognised by 35 countries, even if it was only that way for five days. To be fair to Somaliland here, similar things happened with Senegal and Gambia, who were briefly united as Senegambia for seven years until 1989, and Egypt and Syria, who became the United Arab Republic for three years until 1961. So there is a precedent for this kind of splitting to be successful. For now though, Somaliland is basically on the fake it until you make it path of statehood. Other would-be states like Kosovo and Taiwan have tried this, but it doesn't generally have a great success rate. Those two countries are stuck on 98 and 16 recognising countries respectively. Those supporting the cause hope that Somaliland is on the right track to achieving international recognition. Whether they're right or not, well, only time will tell. As always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.